Welcome back, tribe, to another Galaxy of Heroes video. I am your bald-headed boy, Scribble, and we find ourselves on another glorious Monday morning. That's right, Monday mornings mean only one thing round here. We're about to be galactically challenged. We find ourselves on the forest planet of Kashyyyk facing off against the droids. I wonder if they're going to attack the Wookiees. Quite likely, quite likely. Our global modifier for this is just retaliation. Whenever a unit takes damage, they are going to gain stacking critical damage until they score a critical hit. Whenever a unit is debuffed, they will recover 10% protection, and whenever another unit is defeated, a random ally takes a bonus turn. Our modifiers are for Tuscans, and the Tuscan modifier is phenomenal, but unfortunately, alas, my Tuscans are simply not up to scratch on this one, so I'm going to have to settle for Gold Box, but don't worry, I've got footage for you to show Red Box as well. The enemy has got Protocol Exterminate, meaning they've got an additional 30% offense, and whenever they score a critical hit during their turn, they're going to target lock you for two turns, and whenever a droid an enemy targets hits us with target lock, they're going to recover protection. Makes it, they just always recover protection. It's annoying is what it is. Feats then. We need to win with Tuscans. Yay. We also need to win with one light side and one dark side. And we need to win after removing 400% turn meter from the enemy. This is a little bit frustrating because Sortie and her VIP unit is going to be immune to TMR until we get rid of spare parts, I think it is. But we can still figure all this out. Now, if your Tuscans are like mine, you might have a couple of relics and the rest are just kind of garbage, then you're going to do what I do, which is just go in at tier 6 to get the Tuscan feats, and that will get you gold box, and then just do the rest of the feats at the upper tiers, and that will be it. So that's what we'll do. First and foremost, I'm going to show you footage of how to win with Tuscans at the top tier, the most difficult tier, not using my Tuscans, and then we're going to do tier 6 with mine, and I'll get you the rest of the feats. Let's roll this. So in this battle, we are using a full Relic 7 Tuscan squad, and really is quite straightforward. We're just going to eat the yeet at the start from Salty, and you want to focus all of your attacks on whichever character on the enemy field that has ambush. That's that blue little, you know, marked effect, okay? So that is the modifier for our Tuscans, which lets us target them, ignore everybody else, and it means we're going to stack up momentum. That's those blue stacks with a little fist on them, which means we're going to be raising our offensive and defensive capabilities and that's kind of it that's all the nuance there is to it really guys you just gotta keep hitting the person that is marked now you can try and do a big hit over there on sorty but i find she is just so ridiculously tanky and recovers so much just leave her till the end and honestly you put it on auto after that point. Now, what I would advise is that when it comes to warrior's turns, that you only ever use the basic or the first special. That's going to ramp you additional um, momentum across the team, which is your main ticket to survival. Yes, Chopper is also very tanky, and because we're putting all these debuffs on there, they are constantly recovering protection. But over time, we do actually manage to ramp up the damage. So I'm just speeding up the footage here because it does take a long time to get through. It, 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 it's just a good chat, good point. Blah, blah, blah. It's just good. <laughs> I could talk, guys. It's Monday morning. It's just very useful to us that uh, they give us 15 minutes for these battles because honestly, I don't think I'd be able to go through it. Otherwise, it would just take far too long. Um, but yeah, just keep focusing whatever unit has got that marked or that ambushed and you'll be absolutely fine. It'll always be the same characters because it's based on their max health, I believe, at the time. So it'll be, you know, it'll start off with R2-D2, then it'll be IG-88, and then it'll be triple zero, then it'll be BB-8, and then it'll finish up with Sorty. But you can see here, 12 minutes and 30 seconds, we're down to Sorty. Let's see how long it actually takes to beat her. All right, so eight and a half minutes left and eventually Warrior ramps up enough damage to slap her about the face. And that's kind of it, guys. That's kind of it. You just focus through. You just need... It's, it's a stat check more than anything. There's no real nuance to it. Just follow the person with target and then eventually kill Sortie. All right, cool. So if you're like me, then you just go in at the tier six. Let's go over that. So here we are, we are in tier 6, and the order or the target changes a little bit here. But as you can see, with my setup in particular, with at least two of the Tuscans relict, you can chew through them at a much quicker pace than you would normally. Again, just focus on whatever unit is currently ambushed, and just plink away at them until they're gone. Raider over there just doing crazy, crazy damage. I did look to see if I could get a big hit off with, uh, with Warrior, but no dice, unfortunately. So just go through the enemy team. It's a lot easier to survive in this tier, because they just 
just don't have the same damage output thanks to the lack of relic levels that the team happens to have. You get rid of triple zero and then just put it on full auto, truth be told. It could take a little bit of a while to chew through Saucy, but she honestly can't really do a whole lot to you at this point, so it shouldn't take as long as what it did before, because this is just like... It's much easier. It's much easier. They don't have nearly as much health, and eventually we will chew through them. Raider, I believe, just gets a nice big hit off and slaps her about the face, and that's the end of that. So let's see how it goes. She gets stunned. Boom. There you see Raider there is starting to ramp some pretty good damage, and then sees it off with 160k. All right, so now all we need to do is get the um, TMR with one light side and dark side. There's a couple of ways of doing this. I'll give you a solution without a GL, and then I'll give you a solution with a GL. So the team that I'm running with is actually a Darth Revan team. I'm using Darth Revan, Malak, Basti, Han Solo, and Moff Gideon. Moff Gideon is the most important one because he's our main source of TMR. I use Han because I want to stun Saucy out the gate so that she doesn't start off by killing people and passing her team a bunch of TM. After that, it's a case of control the field, okay? We can't remove turn meter from either Saucy or from our... Or in this case, Chopper, sorry, uh, or from Chopper until we've got rid of the uh, spear parts. After that, they can have their TM removed. I'm using a Darth Revan leadership here because his leadership will place death marked on the enemy leader when we take one of their team below 50% health. Control the situation from Gideon, whoop, strips everybody's TM. Of course, Sortie and whoever VIP has, or whoever has VIP, are immune to that TMR. However, it'll still work with everybody else. Basti over there, you can see here we've got Death Mark on Sorty. Basti can also pass TMR or through Stagger, essentially. So when we stagger an enemy, they will lose their, t uh, their turn meter, which is very useful. You see it here, boom. When that clears off, we will have some Stagger. Triggering that Stagger is really good. Now that we've gotten rid of Spear Parts, we can actually TMR on Sorty and on Chopper. Makes our lives a lot easier. But all you really want to do is mostly just try and drag this battle out, keep the enemy controlled, and then use Control the Situation with Gideon to mass strip TM. Just make sure you get it done like three or four times alongside the TMR that you're getting from the Staggers from Bastila Shan and also on Han Solo's Basic. When Han Solo basics a character that's got over 50% turn meter, he has a chance to remove turn meter. So these are all the little ways that we can just slowly over time just get rid of their turn meter. You see there, I got rid of 50% turn meter from Sorty. It's the most useful way of getting it done. Gideon here is absolutely invaluable. Yeah, it takes a little bit of time, a little bit of nuance, and a little bit of finagling, but eventually you will get it done. Just try and drag out this battle for as long as you can stomach, and you should be totally fine. And of course, as long as you don't lose Han Solo, you should not lose any of light side units, which is obviously kind of goes without saying, right? But that's the other part of the feat. We need to win with one light side and one dark side. Now, if you happen to have JML, I've got a better team for you with JML. We'll get to that in just one moment. When it comes to kill priority, I'd recommend trying to get rid of Sortie through that death mark and then try to get rid of IG-88. The reason I'm saying IG-88 is because Sortie and IG-88 are the only characters on this team that have got any sort of AoE, so they're the only ones that pose a real threat to your hand solo. And you don't want to lose him because obviously you won't get the light side dark side feat then. I'm just spreading the damage here trying to get some TMR out of hand solo, but generally if you've dragged it on this long you should be pretty good. You can see Gideon is another four turns away from control of the situation. We'll probably get round to that one more time. So we're just finishing up here at around about the 10 minute mark and we should see all of the remaining feats pop for us now. Light side, dark side, win the battle and 400% TMR. This was obviously done at tier 10. You can see it here. We go through and boom, there's tier 10, tier 10 and the 400% turn meter. So if you have a, a GL and in particular JML, let's use this team. So the team is a Bastila Shan lead with JML, Wat Tambor, Treya, and then use Moff Gideon again. The idea here is that Bastila's lead with JML gives JML a boatload of bonus protection, and then if you put that tank tech on him, he's going to be recovering even more. Now, JML's Flux removes TM from the enemy team, which is great. Basti is just there for the leadership more than anything. Wat Tambor will force the taunt with the, with the tank tech, and then you've got Gideon to mass strip that TM away with his control of the situation. I'm using Treya here because isolating 
on Salty stops her from gaining all that bonus protection, and we can decrease the cooldowns on Gideon to get round to more control the situations. I find this one to be a very easy way of getting it done. I put the weapons tech over on Gideon to give him more turn meter, and then I think I put the recovery tech on Bastila Shan. So again, we just isolate on Salty. She becomes very easy to kill now. I say very easy. Very easy comparatively to how she normally is, where she just you know, constantly gains all that bonus protection. She can't gain any of that, and our JML over there will just sit there and tank for days, because funnily enough, from Bastila Shan's leadership, he's gaining all that bonus protection, and that weapons, or that tank tech recovers that bonus protection, so they never even get down to his base protection. They just can't do it. They don't have the damage output. He's just recovering far too much every time he takes a turn. Like I said, we want to try and kill Sortie at least once early on at the start. That's going to get rid of the VIP, and it's going to get rid of spare parts, so she can have her turn meter removed, and then we can just keep stripping away with Gideon like that. You take away loads and loads of TM for the enemy team. Yes, you take it from your own team, but ultimately it doesn't matter because we're able to tank. JML is obviously much faster than anybody else on their team. So there we go. We've got rid of Sortie once. There's no more VIP on the field, and we can just focus her down once again. Again, I'm focus I'm choosing to focus her down because she's got a nasty big AOE. You want to try and get that isolate off on her as soon as possible, and you just have fun with it, guys. This one was very easy for me. So as you can see, it does take a little bit of time. We're coming in at just past eight minutes now, or nine minutes uh, left on the clock, and it's fine. You can see we still haven't even touched JML's base protection. Everybody else is super, super healthy. Really easy way of getting it done if you've got the GL. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to about do it for our Galactic Challenge for the day. I hope you did manage to get your red box. Make sure you sign off in the comment section down below. Tell me what team you used so I can expand my Galactic Challenge knowledge and spread it to the masses. Make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't already. And a huge, huge shout out to my wonderful patrons who are just amazeballs. Thank you guys so much for your support. Really do appreciate you. Now, later on today, before we disappear, guys, I am going to be putting out a how-to guide on Conquest. We are, it is starting back up again now, the second one for Queen Amidala, and this is going to be a video guide just detailing every little thing that you need to know about how to get Conquest done. If you haven't already, make sure you check out my playlist for this version of Conquest so you can get your red box. Peace out, and may the Force be with you.